So the topic is intermediate value theorem. Assume that f of x is a polynomial with real coefficients and that a and b are real numbers. So let's say that a is equal to 7 halves and b is equal to 8. All right? Uh, assume that, okay, so then with a less than b, and a is 7 halves, so that's 3 and a half, and b is 8, so a is certainly less than b. If f, and f of a and b of a differ in sign, then there's at least one point, c, such that a is less than c is less than b, and f of c is equal to 0. That is, at least one zero lies between a and b. So note the picture. Uh, a is to the left, B is to the right, they're of different signs, or F of those numbers are of different signs. So F of A is negative, F of B is positive, because it's above that line, which is the x-axis. And C is where the graph, the graph of the function crosses the x-axis, so it's one of our x-intercepts, one of our roots, one of our zeros, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So <clears throat> the intermediate value theorem says if one's positive, one's negative, there has to be a zero in between because that means the graph has to cross the x-axis. That's as simple as it gets, but we're going to run through a quick example. Uh, above here, I'm going to write a function. Let's say f of x equals uh, 3x cubed plus 5x plus 4. And so all you need to do for these types of problems is, is uh, substitute 7 halves in for x. So I get f of 7 halves is equal to 3 times 7 halves cubed. Why did I do that? 5 times 7 halves. I had to use a fraction, didn't I? But I think a lot of the problems that they give you have fractions in there for this particular problem type. And so I figure out what all this is. So that's uh, 3 times that f f f 7 cubed is 343, I think, I want to say. Uh, that's probably wrong. And that's 8. Maybe we'll cut that out. 343 and uh, plus 5. And I just have 7 halves. So this ends up being 5 times 7, which is 35 over 2 plus 4. Okay, so this, this is a positive number, that's a positive number, that's a positive number. So f of 7 halves is in fact greater than 0, or a positive number. Because we don't really care what the value is so much as we want to know if it's positive or negative. So let's change colors, and let's figure out what f of b is. So f of b is equal to f of 8 which is equal to, and so I already can see what's going to happen here. If I do 8 cubed, that's going to be a positive number, multiply it times a positive number. So I'm going to get a positive term plus another positive term plus 4, which means f of 8 is greater than 0 or a positive number. So I did that on purpose. I want to point out the following. If they are both positive, or if they're both negative, what that means is it in fact doesn't tell us anything because if this is my x-axis and let's say that this was a, 7 halves, and this was b, 8, it could be that our function is like this, right, such that 8 is some positive number and, and excuse me, b is some positive, f of b is some positive value and f of a is some positive value. But couldn't it also be true that our function looks like this? And there are, in fact, two zeros in between here. So when I get both positive or both negative, it doesn't tell me anything. But if I get one that's positive uh, and negative, then it, in fact, does tell me that there's a zero in between those two values. So let's try, uh, let's try some different values in here. Let's put... Um, Let's try f, let's stick with f of a, since I already figured that out. That turns out to be um, f of 7 halves. And we get a positive value. I thought I had the finished number, but positive value. Okay, so now let's try b. Uh, let's make, nah. 
let's choose a different value. Let's call this B, so it's our positive, our, our greater value. And I'm gonna choose A to equal negative three. So you can see what happens here. F of negative three, I don't know why I wrote that twice, is equal to, now if I have the function it was three, three x cubed. So three x cubed plus five x plus four. I wanna say it was five x, right? Yeah, okay. So I get three times negative three, that quantity cubed plus five times negative three plus four. Clearly this negative gets preserved and so I got 27 times three, which is negative 81 plus negative 15 plus four. That's gonna be a large negative number. So f of negative three is negative. So that means, I'm gonna put all three points here. This initial b value was eight. This initial a value, then I turned it into our b value was seven halves. And this value was negative three. And this f of a was positive. And f of, or f of b in the second choice, this f of negative three was negative. And so I know that my function has to go somewhere in between here uh, and crosses the x-axis at least once. It could in fact do this, okay? I don't know, but I know that it crosses at least once. And so that tells me there's at least one zero there. That's it, bye.